Okay, thank you, Dr. Nemshev, for your interesting and great presentation. And uh, I would like to remind our attendees that if you've got any questions to uh, Dr. Federer, you can ask them uh, directly in uh, the messages in uh, the participants' uh, profile of uh, our presenter. And uh, we're going further. And I would like to introduce you the Ahmed Al Almaid from uh, Lin Business Services. And uh, he will tell us uh, the presentation about the healthcare and COVID topic. So welcome, Dr. Engineer Ahmed, and uh, welcome on the con to the conference. Thank you, thank you. So um, uh, my name is Ahmed. I'm from Lean Business Services. Uh, at Lean, we provide uh, business solutions to the healthcare in Saudi Arabia. And uh, one line of services that we provide is data services, including simulations. And in our topic today, we're going to be talking about uh, simulation for COVID-19 uh, in, in Saudi Arabia, which is a simulation that helps 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 us understand the impact of uh, different uh, policies to control the spread of uh, COVID-19 and to help in uh, pl uh, capacity planning uh, for uh, health resources. So we've all lived through uh, the last year and a half or two, two years, uh, uh, an outbreak that happened in, in, in uh, worldwide and different countries started to uh, take different policies. Uh, some of these policies were very risky uh, that could impact the, uh, uh, the economics, politics, and uh, things like that. So, and fast responses were very uh, uh, important uh, at the time to control the spread of the disease. So we started building the simulation to, uh, to simu uh, simulate the spread of the disease and how, uh, uh, how policies can, could uh, change the spread of the disease throughout uh, time. So basically we built uh, the famous uh, SEER uh, plus D model, which is a famous uh, uh, model in epidemiology that, that, is, uh, that simulate the, the spread of the disease in, uh, of infectious disease in a, in, a, in a certain community. And we, the, the core of the model is SEER, plus deep, but uh, there are many more uh, models that are built on top of the, uh, of the core model, which we will uh, talk about in a, in a bit. So there is, so the model is actually a hybrid model between agent-based uh, and assistant dynamics, uh, which was very important at, as we will see uh, uh, later in the, uh, the presentation. Uh, it was very important for us to use both uh, both paradigms of simulation. Uh, we use the agent-based model uh, to uh, uh, to simulate the behavior on the granular level, and the system dynamics that uh, to handle large information on aggregate level. Uh, since we since the population in Saudi Arabia is thirty million, uh, it made much more sense to use system dynamics uh, to simulate the uh, to to build the SEER plus D model. But in addition to the SEER plus D model that is built in, in system dynamics, there's there's multiple agent-based models that we will talk about. Uh, and an example, uh, for, for example, uh, simulating the behavior in an airplane where, where there is a, a clear and specific behavior for each agent or each passenger in, in an airplane. So this is the oversimplified core model that we have built. Uh, first, you have susceptible. It is assumed that all the population at at day zero is, are susceptible to the disease. And then once a susceptible person interacts with an infectious person, uh, they will become exposed, uh, exposed to the disease for a certain amount of time. And then that exposed person will be infectious. Uh, and there are four states for infectious, either mild, uh, asymptomatic, or mild, isolated. Asymptomatic, but is isolated, that does not interact with the people, uh, with the community. And there is also uh, uh, severe, where there, where people have uh, need uh, uh, ICU or uh, inten uh, intensive critical care. They are hospitalized in hospitals. And there's also severe that are isolated. And all these four states uh, become either recovered or dead. By this model, you would think that okay, at the end of at time equals infinity, all people are either dead or recovered. Uh, this uh, state chart says so, but as I said, this is the core, the simplified core model. But 
for us to uh, to discuss the entire model, we would need hours, if not days. But uh, in, in reality, uh, uh, not all people will become recovered at day equals uh, infinity. Uh, the natural immunity fades away. So the, uh, this is part of the model. So after, let's say, a year or or, or six months, some people will uh, will be susceptible again, uh, even after being recovered and getting getting the disease. Uh, another thing that we didn't talk about is the immunization. Once people are vaccinated, they can be immunized and they won't be susceptible. But even that, it's it's uh, it's uh, split into multiple models. The uh, immunization, even the immunization fades away. So uh, and not, it's not effective for all people. Some some people will get the vaccines, but will still be susceptible to the disease. Uh, and again, some of them will be immunized, but then they, the immunity will fade away, uh, fade away, and they will be susceptible uh, once again. Uh, so, if we assume that S of T, this is the number of susceptible in, uh, in at time equals uh, T, uh, and E of T is exposed, and so on, and for for simplicity's simplicity sake, let's assume if we look at the uh, the uh, the chart on the uh, right side, uh, we will see only uh, there's only one uh, infectious. Uh, and if we assume, as as I as I mentioned before, uh, it is uh, the model assumes that at time equals zero, the entire population is susceptible, which as you can see here in the line uh, that is green, all people are susceptible to this disease, and with time the number of infections will increase, gradually increase, until you will peak, and then the, infect the number of infectious, four states of infectious, mild, mild isolated, severe, and severe isolated, will start decreasing. And then all people will, e will either be recovered or dead. Again, this is the simplified model. And one more thing to mention here is that, actually, the model, our model does not assume that all people are susceptible at time equals zero. Uh, there's there's also a number of people that are uh, that are tr uh, that are uh, leaving the country and coming back. Some of those people are getting the disease, so uh, the, you you will get the disease either by interacting with people in within your community or if you come up from outside the country. And uh, at any point in time, the sum of, of those uh, functions will equal to p, which is the total population. We're assuming that the total population does not change at any point in time. Uh, so I'm not going to go through all the uh, the uh, formulas, but few few formulas that are important to mention, which is the first one: the uh, the rate of the rate of change of the susceptible ds over dt. Uh, first, you can see there's a negative sign here. The negative sign uh, implicating that. Uh, the number of susceptible in, uh, decreases with, with time, which, as we can see here, starts at, at max and then it starts decreasing. And then we have alpha, which is the contagion par parameter. Uh, if we say, if, for example, uh, one person usually uh, get uh, uh, infect five people, we, uh, the contagion parameter would, would be five in each cycle. And then we would, we would also need the number of infectious in our model. So if there is, if the, if the first person that is uh, that is infectious spread the disease to five people, each one of these five people would spread the disease for other five people, and then these twenty-five would spread it to even uh, to one twenty-five and, and 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 so on. So you'd still need the number of infectious as part of the rate of change of susceptible in your in your in your model. You would also need the proportion of num uh, a proportion of numbers susceptible over the total population. Uh, if we say at day zero all the population are susceptible to the disease, uh, anyone that an infectious person interacts with, they are they might get the, they they have a probability of, of getting the disease. But at day at day infinity, when the the entire population are uh, recovered. If there's an infectious person, no matter how many people he interact with, he wouldn't uh, spread the disease because all people are recovered. So you would still need the uh, proportion of numbers susceptible over the total population in, in, in your model. Uh, and then for each one, there's 
incubation period, there is a uh, 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 fatality rate for, for people to, 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 be, to, to become from uh, severe to severe uh, to, uh, to dead state. And then if we add, if we add the, uh, the rate of change of all, uh, all uh, formulas, we would get a zero, meaning that the rate of change of the, the population is zero. Which, which makes sense because we are assuming that the, the population is, const, is a constant, uh, so the rate of change of a constant would be, would be zero. Uh, so just real quickly, as, as I mentioned in, in, in the example before, that if one person affects the disease, uh, spread the disease to five people, uh, the, each one of these five people would spread it to other, uh, other five. Uh, the, uh, this contagion parameter, or we, we call this uh, the r naught. Uh, and as we can see here, at the, at the first cycle, one person infects uh, two people. Each one of these two people would affect uh, uh, other two, so we'll have four, and the four will be 16 and so on. So I mentioned earlier that there's also uh, an agent-based, uh, multiple agent-based models. One of these agent-based models is to simulate the behavior in an airplane. Uh, there is a clear and specific uh, dynamic uh, dynamics in, in, a, in an airplane, and it's different from the dynamics in a, in a, in a, in a total population in the, in the country. So we're using agent based to simulate behaviors such as the, uh, the behavior in an airplane, where two where if two people uh, sit next to uh, each other and one people is infectious and uh, another is susceptible, the high uh, the, the chance of of, uh, infect, of of spreading the disease is higher than than if those people are not sitting uh, next to each other. We're also using agent-based model for uh, uh, for uh, to simulate the behavior of Hajj, which we will come uh, we will discuss uh, shortly. So the parameter has uh, the I mean the the model has 82 unique parameters, and each one of these 80, 82 is actually a hyper a hyper parameter multiplied by 20 uh, uh, 20 directorates because in Saudi Arabia we have 20 health directorates. So in each one of these 20 directorates, there is a separate uh, uh, simulation model uh, that's, that's happening. And then some people are transferring from one city to another, uh, one director to, to, uh, to another. Uh, and we, we, are, we are also uh, uh, collecting the total uh, infectious in, 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 in the national level. So as I mentioned, there was 82 parameters multiplied by 20. So we have one, uh, 1,640 parameters. These parameters are divided into four main categories. Some of them are related to health care resources, such as the number of ventilators, number of ICU beds, number of manpower, and so on. And other parameters are related to disease behavior, such as the uh, death rate, incubation period, the, the parameters that are related to the COVID-19 itself, that if you have another, uh, uh, another uh, 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 disease, the, this parameter will, will be different. Uh, and, then, and then you also have population beha behavior such as mobility, travel, contact rate, uh, which we will come in uh, short uh, to talk about the contact, uh, contact rate uh, shortly. And then you also have parameters regarding the demographics, total population, the, the chronic disease rate, age distribution, and so on. From these parameters, there are uh, 95 unique pathways multiplied by 20 directors. The, uh, what we mean by pathways are events. Some of these events are based on if statement. For example, if we uh, we utilize all the ventilators in the country, there would be no more available ventilators. So anyone who would need uh, from COVID-19, who any, anyone who's infectious and uh, in a severe uh, state and would need access to ventilators, they wouldn't have because there is no available ventilators at that time. So the rate of change, uh, I mean, the rate, uh, the death rate will increase based, based on the, the number of uh, ventilators. And another, another uh, pathways are related to policies that have been taken in Saudi Arabia, uh, such as closure of, uh, of uh, banning going to school or making school uh, 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 hybrid or, or, or online, online uh, schools. Uh, this will decrease the contact rate among the population. So uh, we're, we're uh, as I mentioned, we're we're studying the policies that have been taken in Saudi Arabia, 
uh, such as international travel, uh, 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 physical versus uh, online schools, Eid, which is our national holiday, holiday vaccination, and uh, and so on. So. And we, we all, we're also uh, reporting the number of uh, re health resources that are needed, such as nurses, ICU beds, uh, doctors, and so on. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we also built uh, uh, an, an agent-based model for the Hajj, which is uh, an annual Islamic uh, Islamic event that happens in, Sa in Saudi Arabia. And millions of people from around the world uh, come to Saudi Arabia and in Mecca specifically to uh, participate in, in, in Hajj. So we built a, a totally separate model, uh, agent-based model for how people uh, perform uh, Hajj in five days, uh, five days uh, in the year. And then those people are coming from the output of the simulation model, the year plus uh, the simulation model that we, we built. So, so the output of the the CIR plus D model will go to the input of, of the hedge model, and then they will be there for five days. And then once they finish, they will go back to the the, the uh, initial model to see how they would impact the spread of the disease in Saudi Arabia. Uh, so. There are different uh, policies uh, or precautions that, that have been taken, and we were studying the impact of each uh, each policy, such as uh, what would happen if we if we make all people who go to Hajj with uh, uh, are healthier, or choose healthier population. I mean, or uh, what would happen if there is uh, let's say uh, uh, if we take for, uh, two swabs versus one swab before Hajj, what would happen during the Hajj? Uh, how often are we uh, checking the temperature after Hajj, would there be isolation for people who did Hajj at home or at, the, uh, at their home or at Mecca, or would there be isolation in, uh, 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 in general or not? So the model also uh, is, uh, has a has an interface, a user-friendly interface, so the user can uh, change the uh, the parameters. They can change the population. It, it can be used for any any population other than Saudi Arabia, and you can also change the 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 uh, the policies themselves. You can you can disable or enable a policy. You can change the time when that policy has been taken to see how would that uh, uh, impact the spread of the disease. And in addition to the to the uh, to the interface, we we also we also provide uh, reports. Uh, one of these reports is predicting the numbers for next week or for uh, next month. And with all this uh, complexity that we talked about, we reached a percentage difference between the simulated numbers and the actual numbers of an average less than 1%. And in some cases, we reached 0.07% uh, accuracy or uh, percentage difference, which is 99% uh, accuracy. And uh, we also report what would happen if, uh, if we if schools come back, uh, become, become uh, physical, uh, what would happen and if we don't take any, uh, uh, if, 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 if the, if the uh, if KSA did not take any policy from start uh, from day zero till today, what would happen? How many, how many mortality cases we'll have? And we also rank the, uh, uh, the effectivity of each uh, policy. Again, we also report the number of, of total cases, the number of people who would need ICU, number uh, mortality rate, and the number of dead people due to COVID and so on. And numbers regarding the head. So what would happen if we uh, isolate people in their home at Mecca or we don't do isolation, or if we don't do the head uh, in the first place? What would happen if we choose a specific selected group of people who have got the disease and got the natural uh, immunity? And this was Hajj before COVID-19. As you can see, it's very crowded. And during uh, during COVID-19, the number of people who went to Hajj and the proportions were different. And you can see it's, it's a drastic difference between the two pictures. Also, the last thing uh, is, is the vaccination. What would happen if we don't do vaccination, if we vaccinate 1% of the population, 10% and 100%, how would that control the spread of the disease? There are a few challenges, of course, that we faced. 
in, in, in building this model. First, was there was no national uh, uh, simulation that covers the the or simulate the behavior of Saudi Arabia once the the uh, the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the pandemic started. So there is no time to say, okay, we'll uh, wait, we'll build a model, and we'll come back to you in six months, and it would be good. No, you can you have to build the model right away, and because fast responses needs to be taken. Also, there was difficulty with dealing with data from different sources. Uh, another another challenge that there was so many decisions that were, were taken at the same time. This made it difficult to, uh, to understand the impact of one decision over the, uh, the other, uh, because multiple decisions are being taken at the same time. It's, it's very difficult to know the impact was due to, uh, to which one. Uh, the next one is changing in the community habits and behavior. Uh, similar to the, the changes in decisions, changes in the community be behavior also made it difficult to simulate the behavior of, 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 the, uh, of uh, how people interact in, in, in Saudi Arabia at that time. The last one, which is probably the, the most important one, uh, I, I would say, using the right paradigms. I, I see sometimes people using only agent-based model for uh, for a SEER uh, model. It would be fine to use SEER model for a small community, but a community where there's 30 million people, you would need a lot of uh, computational power. So some, some people would build agent-based model for the entire 30, 30 million uh, population. And then they, they, would, they would need a, com uh, a supercomputer. And even with the supercomputer, the, the runtime would be sometimes up to 15 hours, sometimes to, to a day. Uh, this will make it much more difficult to do reverse engineering because uh, we have numbers that we know regarding the infection, regarding the population, but there are numbers that we don't know, such as the contact rate, how many people and how many pe people on average each person interact with. Uh, but we also know the number of cases that happened this uh, today and the number of cases that happened last week. So with all this information, we can do reverse engineering to solve for the, the values that we don't have, such as the contact rate. When you build uh, 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 an agent-based model that requires a lot of time to run, uh, you wouldn't have the luxury to do a trial and error to do uh, a very accurate uh, feature engineering or re reverse engineering. So this will compromise the uh, accuracy. Uh, you would think that the more complex would be the, the better or the more accurate, but in some cases like that, especially when all people in, the, in your, uh, in your uh, model interact uh, similarly, uh, I mean, behave similarly. If, if there is a specific behavior for each person, such as in Hajj or in airplanes, it, it, it does make sense to build an agent-based model to, uh, to make the behavior more accurate. But when you have the 30 million, it's very difficult to build, to know the behavior of each person of the, these 30, uh, 30 million, and which will decrease or uh, wouldn't give you the flexibility to do an accurate reverse engineering to increase the uh, the accuracy or the rate of change of your model. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Engineer Ahmed. And uh, I think we can uh, wait for, for a few seconds to any questions uh, that may appear from our participants. And uh, I would like to let you know that in uh, six minutes uh, on the track one, we're starting the workshop uh, by our uh, partner, Benjamin, ba Benjamin Schumann. And uh, he will tell us about the analogic modeling. So please uh, feel free to move to the first track and uh, attend the workshop. And uh, I would like to uh, remind you once, once again, in case you have any questions to the presenters, you will be able to ask, the, ask them in uh, direct messages. So please feel free to find, find our speaker's profile and uh, ask them directly. So thank you very much once again, and uh, see you on the track one of the workshop. Thank you.